Hey, what is up, mortals? Welcome to part 2 part 4 of what if Izuku had a villain quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. The final event had arrived and the remaining contestants gathered at center stage of the Colosseum-like building. Present Mike announced that the last competition was a 1v1 tournament battle between the students. Midnight called the attention of the students to her so that they could draw their lots before heading off for some downtime. Before she could begin the draw, Ajiro raised his hand in an act of forfeit. Izuku immediately questioned his choice in tandem with Ida. The tailed boy explained he had no memory of what exactly happened in the last event, believing it to have something to do with his purple-haired teammate. Despite insistence from his classmates, he was not swayed. This prompted his other teammate from the match to speak up as well. Nimuri accepted their withdrawals before peering around to find replacements for the two contestants. Kendo, a ginger-haired 1B student, suggested Tetsu Tetsu's group due to their persistence and drive in the match. The umpire quickly chose the steel-quirked male and vine-haired girl from the group, once more having a full circuit. A sound effect plays from the holo screen in the stadium, displaying the first round of matches. Midoriya's guard was instantly up as he stared at the name Shinso. He had absolutely no idea what he would be going up against and it was worrying. A voice suddenly called out his time, making the boy jump suddenly as he turned to see his opponent behind him. He offered quick, calm pleasantries with the Viridian-eyed team, only amping up the suspicion he felt. The stadium attention was shifted over to a series of games that were meant to entertain the attendants and students. However, the students left in the last event were busy with an array of different things. The time had come for the final challenge to start as Cementos finished creating the fighting area. Izuku took several calming breaths, guilt weighing down on him on the plan he created. He couldn't take any risks with his opponent. He had no idea what his quirk was and he couldn't risk losing. Not if he wanted to keep his oath he made in front of Todoroki. This left the boy with no other choice than to take the mysterious General Studies student down immediately. One giant plume of his toxin would take care of it, that much he was sure of. What worried him was how it would affect his foe. Present Mike announced the two fighters, noting the grim expression on the green-haired boy's face as the two stared at each other. Before our match begins Shinso, I'm sorry the words left a visible look of confusion and some anger on the other teen's face just as they were allowed to start. The baggy-eyed teen opened his mouth to respond, only to receive a massive plume of sickly, green smoke in his face. The boy across from him looked pale and shaky, Midnight herself shocked at what had occurred. At first the stadium was silent, until Shinzo began to move. He looked wildly around him, whispering softly under his breath as he began visibly hyperventilating. Murmurs of shock and confusion passed through the crowd, cries of worry echoing as the teen suddenly crumpled to the ground in a heap, his face easing from its previous, tortured look. Midnight gulped as she declared her protege the winner. No one in the audience cheered. All of his classmates were quiet. Momo saw the sick look on her friend's face and spoke up. That was amazing Midoriya. You won in one move. Her cry motivated similar ones to pipe up from other students, mainly 1A. The crowd anxiously joined in as recovery girl came to check on Shinzo. She ordered one of the students to assist her in bringing the boy to her ward. The hero knew waking up the boy before the toxin faded would only put him back in an unconscious state. At least asleep he would feel peace. The one who put Itoshi in said state felt horrible, following Chio to the nurse's office. Heterochromatic eyes watched the back of his retreating classmate, a feeling of caution instilling itself in his mind as he remembered the promise the male made to him. Izuku felt slightly nauseous at his actions, disbelief at what he had down reaching his mind now. He sat by the unconscious student's bed, the school nurse eyeing the Viridian-eyed teen. I hope you are not blaming yourself, Midori. The words brought a confused look to his eye. Nimiri has already informed me and several other staff members of the apprehension you have around your quirk. You had no idea what your opponent's quirk was and you neutralized him quickly. That's common in hero work, so stop panicking. I would rather not deal with another unconscious student. A weary smile appears on his face as he turns his attention to the television in the room. He watches as Todoroki wins his match and Momo loses Hermes despite her best efforts. A frown appeared on his face as he saw the expression on his friend's face and made note to cheer her up later. It was just as the next match was starting that a groan came from the student he was sitting next to. The green-haired pupil's attention snapped down from the screen as he anxiously watched Shinzo. The boy was just about to ask what happened when he was cut off by another apology from his opponent. This only confused him further as he asked what exactly happened during the match. Izuku explained his strategy and his quirk to Shinzo, a feeling of worry overwhelming him as he wondered how he would take it. Huh, that's one hell of a quirk you got there. The answer was very simple and left the recipient of the praise shocked. He looked at Hitoshi for any insincerity and found none. He questioned how he was so calm about this and why he did not find his quirk villainous. PFFT. Well I'd be one hell of a hypocrite if I did wouldn't I? 
He stretched in bed as he looked at the boy. A look of sympathy in his eyes my quirk is brainwashing. I can take control of anyone so long as they verbally respond to me. Trust me when I say that I understand the whole villain quirk bullshit. I've been hearing it my whole life. Midoriya blinked as tears began falling from his eyes. He met someone who finally understood him, his pain, his struggle. He furiously wiped his eyes and put on a smile. I think we should properly introduce ourselves. I'm Izuku Midoriya. Hitoshi Shinzo. It's nice to see that at least one student in one seems alright he offered a smirk as the boy across from him tried to defend his class. The two conversed for a few minutes as Recovery Girl gave them a quick checkup and had them return to the festival. After all, Izuku had a match coming up soon. The duo made their way back to the stadium where the Viridian teen insists for the boy to come with him to meet up with Momo. After a reluctant agreement, the boy calls over his friend, noting how she still looked down. Yeah Momo, I saw your fight in the nurse's ward. You did great against Takoyami the male offered in an attempt to cheer her up. She denied the praise, stating that she could have done better. Don't say that. You are a great hero student. You did your most in that fight despite being at a disadvantage since your quirk is directly combative. The word startled Yeyurazu you used your intelligence and quick thinking to do what you could. That's all that matters. A grateful smile appears on her face as she hugs Izuku. She quickly composed herself and asked about the purple-haired student he brought with him. Introductions were performed before the last two battles were performed. It was quite interesting to the trio to see the draw between Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima. In addition, Yuraka's strategy during her fight with Bakugu was incredible, despite her loss. The first round was finally complete and the next rung of the ladder had been formed. Midoriya was silent next to his two companions as he began simulating situations that may occur in his battle in his mind. His concentration was broken as the crowd began cheering. At the center of the field, Tetsu Tetsu and Aijiru were arm wrestling to determine who would move on to the next match. After a close battle, the redhead overwhelmed the other male, winning his spot in the quarterfinals. Present Mike announced that the next match was up, calling forth the next two students. This match is sure to be a fight for the ages. Both these competitors took out their opponent immediately, leaving them without a chance. The announcer's words hyped up the excitement in the crowd even further who will win in this fight. Will it be the ice-cold Todoroki or the quiet Midoriya? At the Midoriya household, Inko was surrounded by tissues as she watched her little boy. In another location, two more were watching the match with less, pure intentions. All across Japan, people were on the edges of their seats. The two stood before each other, both holding a calculated gaze. However, if one looked close enough, they could see the spark of anger already in Izuku's eyes. The two figures tensed, preparing for the moment where present Mike would yell. Start. A wave of ice flew from Shoto towards Izuku forcing the teen skyward as he projected himself to the top with a blast of his quirk. From his high ground, he let out a cry as he fired a giant wave of his neurotoxin, with his opponent attempting to use his ice to block it. That won't work Todoroki. My quirk may be disturbed by yours but it is still a gas. As he said that the vapor crept around the objects, the field becoming a mix of noxious green and crystalline blue the only way you're getting out of this is by using your quirk. Or losing. Another wave of ice came from the heterochromatic boy, forcing the other teen to the left as he let loose another wave of his quirk. The pattern seemed to continue several times over, a fury building in the jungle-haired boy's gut. Once more a wave of ice came at him and he dodged once more. At that moment, he snapped. Both him and Todoroki were equally trapped by the other. His opponent had an advantage but refused to use it. I thought I warned you Todoroki. You had two ways of getting out of here teeth gritted as his stance shifted and his eyes seemed to blaze with a blinding fire since you won't listen to words, I'll have to show you I mean business. The angry shouts from the teen shocked his classmates. They had never seen the, normally calm and collected, adolescent so furious. Izuku roared as he let out a humongous cloud of his toxin. The air of the stadium was stained with the color of it. It was stained with the color red. Shock registered on the faces of Wana and Midnight as they watched the cloud descend on Todoroki. Never before had the color of Midoriya's toxin changed. It was the most bizarre thing to have happened in the tournament thus far, to them at least. They heard another cry of anger and turned to the green-haired teen atop the glacier-sized piece of ice. But it wasn't him that uttered the cry. Suddenly, a spire of flame washed across the ice, melting a gigantic part of it. The student on top of it cried out in pain from the heat as he quickly used his quirk to avoid as much fire as he could. Midnight let out some of her quirk to disperse the cloud so the crowd could better see what was happening. Todoroki had a terrifying face of rage on his face. Even Endeavor was shocked to see such a visage on the face of the unemotional teen. Shut up Midoriya. How dare you taunt me with the story I told you. This statement caused confusion amongst everyone as the other male hadn't stated anything that could relate to that. Nimiri puzzled over what happened when a thought came to mind. Wait. The anger Izuku was displaying. 
The sudden color change, the way the Todoroki is acting now the hero's thought began combing the events as she paled slightly it's possible that, rather than hallucinating his worst fear, he's having a hallucination that it projecting forth a feeling of extreme anger. The son of the number two pro hero was merciless in his advance, letting loose wave after wave of both his side. At last, one of his fire attacks launched his opponent out of the arena and into an unconscious state. The R18 hero noticed that the rage in the student's eye had still not faded and quickly went into action, using her quirk to put the boy to sleep. Those watching were at a loss at what to say. Present Mike announced that Todoroki had won and, after a beat, the crowd exploded into cheers. Recovery girl quickly swept in and left with the boys to heal them. The match left many people in deep thought. Midnight pondered the full ability of her apprentice and made note to arrange a meeting with him. Momo was confused about what happened between her two friends. Endeavor held a mixture of perverse pleasure at seeing his son use his fire and shock at his loss of composure. Meanwhile, in a messy-looking room, two people sat in front of a small screen displaying the event. A smile is stretched across the blue-haired one's face. This kid just got even more interesting. I think I just might forgive him for what he did to me at USJ if he could prove useful. The smirking man laughed psychotically. Things never did get easier for Izuku Midoriya, did they? Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our discord is an all-around fantastic place to be. Rather you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits, we're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.